Well, hello there, my brothers and sisters. It's Josh Pack, and welcome to another episode of The Golden Image of Churchianity is a Lie. Today, I want to ask you, could you believe, would you believe, would you dare to believe, or even consider the notion that every single church, everywhere that you know, everyone that's in a seminary, everyone that's got a building, that's got a pastor leading the flock, that's got uh, the worship set up the way it does, I mean, everything that you know as a church, every denomination that you've ever heard of, would you be willing to entertain that they were completely subject to Satan, that they were advancing the cause of Satan, and that they were preventing the entire world from entering into the kingdom of God? Would you believe that? <clears throat> Conversely, would you believe that Christ has already made you perfect? That you're exactly what he wants you to be? But that through the church and its condemnation, its false images, you have to battle sin because you're trying to live up to an image that was placed before you that you should be like that is unattainable. Especially to someone who was not made to make that image. Would you believe that? Would you believe, would you, if I told you you were perfect today, and I know you'd turn immediately and look at yourself and say, well, I do this, I do this, I do this. And that's wherein the problem lies, you guys. Immediately when I ask, are you perfect, you should say, I am because Christ is. Done. Are you adequate the way you stand? Do you, are you the Christian you want to be? And everybody's like, no, I, mean, I could always be better. Well, that is again obedience to the accusation of the enemy that he has put he has put upon you and said that you don't measure up to the image of God kind of like what he did to Eve you guys he says but if you eat this he knows you'll be like him and so what happens is you're trying to believe you're trying to force yourself into the image of Christianity you're trying to make yourself a good Christian yet you keep falling short and you keep failing or on the other hand, you think that you're king shit on Turtle Island because you can do those things, because you're a perfect Pharisee. See, sin operates in the fact that it, what it does is there's two responses. There's one that whenever Satan accuses you, you say, yeah, you're right, I'm absolutely no good and worthless and I'll just, you know, so you're defeated already, you're just gonna go out and do whatever you want. You know, find a, your own way to fill that hole inside of your heart which you go out and you find your way and you fill it with, you know, you anesthetize yourself with alcohol, drugs, sex, people's approval. I mean, you keep going down the list <clears throat> of all the ways that you're trying to fill that unrighteousness in yourself or iniquity or sin, whatever, you, whatever word you'd like to use. But iniquity and sin only means that you are less than what you ought to be. Other people take the sin accusation as a challenge and so if Satan says that this is what you're supposed to be and this is where you're at, and they're like, oh, well, you know, I'll get there. And you're, you're up there really close and you're, you're, be you're getting along better than most people. You speak Greek and Latin and Hebrew and you, you've been to seminary and you've got your scriptures memorized and you're, you're going to church every week. You got all the lists checked off. So when, when Satan accuses you, you're like, nope. I'm not what you say I am, Satan. Look at me, I'm doing this, I'm good. I'm doing this, 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 and this. So I am in the kingdom. I am doing what God commands me to do. So the problem is, is both sides are both pointing to their own works for the position where they're at, depending on their own self and their own strength and their own righteousness to answer the call of Satan. Because whether you rebel or whether you conform, you still, subjected yourself to that accusation, not realizing it. Every single church is still res responding to the accusation everywhere. It's still a responding to the accusation, still calling themselves sinners, still saying, oh, well, if, if, you, if you want her into the kingdom, you gotta believe like I did, and you gotta do this like I did in order to come in, yet they themselves still don't believe that there is the kingdom until after they die, because they're still fighting and struggling against sin. There's no peace there. So they're like, well, heaven must be after we die. The kingdom of God must be after we die. Well, that's not the truth. And again, shows you you're underneath the power and the dominion of Satan. You're under the dominion of sin. Sin still dominates you and rules every aspect of your life. All of your efforts of being good are driven by your sin and inadequacies. 
it's much easier to reach those that are sinners according to the standards of, of good and bad because they know they're evil. They don't even, they don't even try. But the good people are the hardest ones to reach, you guys. So what I'm saying to you is the entire church is founded on the lie that you have to believe to be saved or make a decision for Christ to be saved or whatever else, immediately excluding themselves and anyone that believes them from the salvation that Christ has already procured for them. Just like Eve, to where she was made in the image and the dominion of God. She was in perfect fellowship with him. But when the accusation came, she responded and ate. And that's what's happened. So you despised your birthright and your inheritance and went in search of something more through sin. So that's, that is the state of the entire church right now. The entirety from the ground up, from the bottom, I don't care what denomination. And I'm not just saying the church because Islam, Judaism, I mean, philosophers, atheists, Buddhists, Taoists. I mean, this is what they're all doing. The, the concept behind every single religion, which they are all the same, including Christianity. You might have different characters in your play, but what you're trying to do is the same thing. So what happens is the idea that you are here, righteousness is here, or Zen, or the, the right guy you want to be, or the person you think you ought to be, and this person's here, and so you're going to come up with steps to try to reach this person. <clears throat> okay, well, this person is fake. You made him up. It's an image of your own understanding. It's idolatry. You, as a result of Satan's accusation and an image placed upon you by your idea of right and wrong, you've made an image to conform to. You'll never reach it. Because as you get better at making that image, as you get better at becoming closer to your image, you'll make a better image. As you're more skilled, you're more of a skilled artisan or an artist, that image will become better and better the closer you get to it. So it'll get further and further away from you. So you'll never obtain, you're constantly searching, you're constantly seeking, you're constantly following that image, never quite getting there, never wholesome, never, wholesome, never adequate, wrong, and teaching everyone around you due to all the same thing. Where Christ is different, because Christ isn't a Christian, my friends. He doesn't care. What Christ has done is made you right, perfect. So he took that image and destroyed it. So he says, right here, what I have made, is perfect. I'm a perfect creator. I don't make up, I don't mess up things. I do things exactly as you're supposed to be. So whatever you are is right where I want you to be right now. I don't need to change you. If I decide to change you, I will empower you to change to the I, for what I need you for, not what you think you need you for. I created you. I'm the one that says whether you're right or wrong, and I have called you right, perfect, and entire, lacking in nothing. So if Jesus has called you this, and you still don't obey him, he's not your kingdom. I mean, he's not your king. You've not entered into his kingdom, and you're still in outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Even though the door is flung wide open, the veil is torn from the top to the bottom. We can enter at any time. Yet you won't, because you'd love the darkness rather than the light. I, I'm not accusing you. I've done the same thing. I was just right where you are. Christ appeared to me, and I still had to fight through all this. <clears throat> he told me personally, and I still had to go through all this. I mean, that's how dumb I am. So, you guys, every single building that is built upon the foundation of your ability to accept Jesus, your ability to understand, your ability to make a decision, your do, 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 anything. It seems like it's such a small thing. So if I tell you that you have to believe to be saved, that's one thing. But if I tell you you were saved that you would believe, that's an entirely another thing. And people, it's because people think it's just Salvation is the goal, but it's not. That's not what it's about. It's about Christ being glorified. So if Christ is glorified in your, in your body, in, in your mind, in your soul, in your spirit, then you are glorified. Because your righteousness is based upon Him. 
and whether or not he came in the virgin birth, that he lived a sinless life, that he died on the cross, that he went to the belly of the earth, that he rose from the dead, that he ascended to the right hand of God, taking you with him the entire trip through that virgin birth when he linked himself to you. So everything is whether or not Christ rose from the dead. When I look at you, I know you're a saint. I don't have to guess. I don't care about what you look like. I know that Christ rose. That's all I need to know. I witness of that resurrection as being enough and the ascension on top of that. <clears throat> but it was enough. He rose for your justification. It's done. Now anyone that's living like it's not done, who is your king? It's not Jesus. What kingdom are you you're in? Oh, you're under the dominion of sin still. Even though you go to church and you do all the right things, oh, like the Pharisees did. Oh, you know, oh, well, wait a minute. I can't be a Pharisee. We're not, we're not Pharisees, we're Christians. Well, you're after the same mind as them, which is the way of Cain. Because when you move from Adam and Eve, you're going to see it reiterated. So Adam and Eve covered themselves, and God said, who told you you're naked? I didn't tell you you're naked. So then God then covered them with a lambskin. Well, we can move on to Cain, and Cain was offering of the fruits of the soil. And God had no respect for the sacrifice. And Cain was angry because he was working hard for his sacrifice. He thought God should take it. This should be, you know, God should accept my sacrifice. I did a lot of work for him. <laughs> Abel was the keeper of the sheep. And he offered of the sheep. And God goes, meh, there's a man after my own heart. Because Abel witnessed that God's sacrifice was right and enough. There wasn't any need for all that work, all that toil, and all that effort, and all that anger. Christ has done it all, every little bit of it. So then today you see the two expressed in whether those that believe in truth who say that Christ's sacrifice was right enough. So when I look at you, I say, I, you are saved because Christ rose. That's all I need to know. I don't care. You might not be acting like a good person right now, but you've been saved. The reason why you're not acting like a good person is probably because you're listening to Satan's accusation, trying to conform to an idea of your own establishment, and failing miserably every day. And you're so caught up in your failure, and you're so caught up in your, your losing, you're so caught up in your, your inadequacy, that that's what comes from you, that what's manifested from you. But on the other side, if you turn and put your eyes on Christ and consider Him, consider His victory applied to you, consider how great He is, then you are instantly set free from that. So when Christ becomes your king, there is peace and joy and hope and fullness because I'm not dependent upon myself in any way anymore. So now that I'm not dependent on myself anymore, I have no more need to conform to images. Hence why I call my channel the golden image of churchianity is a lie. So now I employ myself to God in all things on all times because I don't have anything else to do. God energizes my spirit both to will and to do the things of his good pleasure. When I'm unemployed from my idea's righteousness, and I'm subject to him for my righteousness, now I have no more need to search for it. I have no more need to work for it. I have no more need to even consider it. And no more need to even look at my sins or my shames or my fallen shorts. I don't have to look at those things anymore. All I do is keep my mind focused and every thought captive to Christ. And he transforms me and renews me from the inside out through fullness not my inadequacies, not me beating myself up and conforming myself into an image. I'm filled with peace and joy, reconciliation. This is what motivates me every single day, where I never run out, I'm never tired. Of course I have my issues, because I don't live alone. You know what I mean? And you know, it's really easy to point out the flaws in other people, just ask my wife. <sighs> But the thing is, is that I know the truth, that I am done, I am redeemed, I am a child of God, that he perfected me forever. When it, once he sanctified me forever, through his one offering once for all, I'm done. Whatever I am is what I am, what I'm supposed to be right now. Whatever process I'm in, if I'm in a process at all, I am right where I'm supposed to be. I don't have anything to change or to do. I don't do anything. All I do is I focus on Christ, Remain in his love, 
I try to encourage others and lift them up and fill them with the truth so that they can grow and be free and enter into the kingdom for the first time. I'm trying to get people to meet themselves for the first time because you don't know who you are until you're employed from who you ought to be. So for me, I know who I am now. I'm solid. I don't have to be anything else. So whatever I want to do, whatever I naturally am, that's what I am now. I have peace and joy daily. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit and I overflow. I want to teach and speak everyone. That's all I want to do is give them and fill them with the, the hope and the love of Jesus Christ. That's all I care about. All I want to do is make sure I'm honoring him. I don't care about your opinions. I don't care if you don't like when I say fuck. I don't care. You mean nothing to me. You'd have to tell me how I'm offending God, not you. I don't care about offending you. You mean nothing to me unless you are in the kingdom. According to your knowledge and your, your understanding, I'm not going to listen to you ever. I, of course I care about you. I want your child of God. I want you to come into your kingship. I want you to reign in life. Now, it's not about going to heaven after life. It's here. This is the stage. This is where the battle is being fought. It's on this earth now. And as long as we're employed to other things, we are ineffective for God. And we are not at all doing what God has called us for. Okay, the second thing is, this is, the second question is, um, that, but I've grown since I've come in the church. And I'm like, you've, you've maybe escaped some addictions. You've, you've, you've gotten further along. You might have, and that's true. Um, because I'm going to tell you, I came through the church system. I developed and grew through it, but it was a matter of fighting against it is where I've been honed. So you're, you're going to be better. You can develop self-control. You can exercise your willpower. There's lots of things that the church you, you can do because being good will help you. Being good and being obedient to the law and doing the things you ought to do will bless you as a person. And that's great. And I encourage anyone until the faith comes, abide in the law. But the law is for sinners. So you guys know, and for the unrighteous, when you come to the knowledge of Christ and you're, you're subject to him, he is the one that dictates to you. You don't need a law anymore. The law is gone. You, Christ is the fulfillment of the law and you're in him. But anyway, I digress. So, yes. But the thing is, is that do you, it's not about growing necessarily. This is not what this is about. It's about escaping the rudiments of the world, about laying down your images of what you think you ought to be, and then conforming to what God has said. So I asked him also, I said, do you ever worry about your salvation, whether you're really saved or not? And he's like, yeah. And I go, I go, so a lot of what you think would be the evidence that you're saved is how good you're being or how good the works you're doing. And he's like, yeah. And I said, well, that's where the error falls. Or that's what I want to tell him now is that's where the error falls. Because what happens is, is that you're, you're, Satan's going to get you to look at yourself and your own works. And that's what the church is telling you to do, is to put the magnifying glass on yourself for salvation, to see whether or not you're really saved. And what happens is the longer you put that magnifying glass on yourself, you're going to find more and more and more and more and more things that are not pretty. That are not Christian. And I'm telling you, the Christian image is false. So you're comparing yourself to falseness anyway. So the thing is, that will only lead to despair. That will only lead to be burnt out. That will only lead to meeting the status quo to where you're just going to fit in with those around you, to where you're reasonably happy, to where you're reasonably comfortable, to where you're reasonably safe. On the other side of things, you're going to go outside where it's radical, where you have overflowing joy, overflowing confidence in your salvation because it's based upon Christ. Your conscience will be clear. One of the most beautiful things in the scripture that people overlook huge is they'll see the Ten Commandments and they'll go, well, you got thou shalt, thou shalt, and this is what you got to do. That, that's true partially. Because from somebody who is whole and righteous inside, those things will manifest from them anyway. But um, 
what happens is, is that we get caught up in that system of trying to live up to those laws, which no one can. So it always does, all it does is every time you look at the law, it reminds you of your sin, which, which enlarges your consciousness of your sin. So you're looking more and more at yourself and how much you fall short because you're looking at the law only. Well, the law was supposed to be manifest and fulfilled on the Day of Atonement, okay? So the Day of Atonement would be, you'd have to bring your, your lamb, right? And you'd have to protect this lamb and you'd have to raise it in your house and your whole family would be in love with it. And you'd have to go through this whole thing. You'd have to protect it the whole way there and the whole way back. And this lamb loves you. It is loyal to you. It will follow you all the way to the slaughter to the very step to where you have the knife in your hand, it'll just look at you and love you the whole time until you take his life. Not only that, your wife and your children are watching from outside in the window. They're looking, there's a looking glass for you to view, for the women to see what's going on in there. And maybe your children see it too. But you have to kill their beloved pet, the thing that loves them so much, you gotta kill it instead of them. Because that's what it's referring. Then you got to take it out. You give it to the priest. And he goes and prepares it. And the priest, he's seen a thousand of them that day. He doesn't even doesn't even flinch. He's just like, ah, oh, next, yeah, ah, oh, next, <laughs> done. Takes him off. He doesn't even care anymore. He's so numb. It doesn't even matter to him anymore. But you, you love this sheep, and the sheep loves you as you slice its throat. And then they take it from you. They prepare it, and then you got to bring it back and make your family eat it before you can leave. If you can imagine the heart-wrenching, disgusting feeling you would feel, well, at the end of all that, and after you ate it, you, your sins were atoned for. You could have peace with God. So the law was there so that you can confess all your sins and iniquities and the things that you were shameful about, and you could confess them. And then the blood sacrifice was to wipe away that guilt, shame, and fear so that you wouldn't be subject to your sin anymore. You'd be you'd be subject to righteousness so that you could fellowship with God. And this is what this is for. To fellowship with God, you have to be righteous. Otherwise, you're gonna to pretend to be something you are, you're not because you think that's what he wants to see. Even though he knows everything, you can't know him even if you're a foot from him because you're not genuine. You're hiding yourself from God like Adam and Eve did in the, in the garden when they covered themselves and hid <clears throat> even though God was in their very midst and their very presence. Christ showed up, said, who told you you're naked? And then he sacrificed himself to cover us. So I'm here to tell you that God's sacrifice was right and enough. You were utterly saved. You were utterly redeemed. Now it's just knowing it and becoming it. Knowing you're loved. Quit trying to be something you're not. Quit trying to conform to the imaginations of men. Quit trying to beat yourself up into submission when all it does is lead you astray and prevents you from entering the kingdom. And those around you, you're leading them in suit too. So they won't enter the kingdom. Jesus hammers the Pharisees. I mean, hammers them. You're of your father, the devil. You encompass sea and land to find one student, and you make him twofold the son of hell that you are. The name of the Lord is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. This should be spoken directly to the churches, you guys, because they are preventing, they themselves have not entered the kingdom, and they're preventing them that would in the name of Jesus. So anyway, I'm not going to go much further. But I hope you guys see this, and are, are, it's... It's, it's taking root inside of you. There's nothing left to do. Christ has done it all. Just by knowing that will transform you. All right, you guys. I love you. More importantly, Jesus loves you. Get out there and tell everyone that Jesus loves them. I'm challenging you. Get out there and, and change the system. The church is evil, you guys. From the ground up, every last little bit of it. And I'm not saying evil like they're murderers, child molesters, well, there's some, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about it's twisted. It's wrong. It's never entered. It's about being good, not godly. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a good day. Bye.